One of the best things about being a nerd is delighting in the limitless joy that our hobbies, interests, and collections give to us. However, when we love something this much, we often want to share that passion with others. And now, thanks to the internet, it's not hard to find a community that loves the same things that you do. That should be enough for us, right? For whatever reason, we feel the need sometimes to introduce others to our passion. It's a gift, right? We want others to feel this, this joy. And sometimes, sometimes, it actually works. In this video, I'm going to share with you my suggested penabling approach based on who you're considering. And I'll provide some product recommendations for different types of people. As you can imagine, attempting to casually explain what I do for a living over the past dozen years has given me the opportunity to see varying degrees of interest in people's faces. I can tell when I should continue explaining and when I should show mercy and stop. Ultimately, that's the basis of my penabling approach. I think everyone could benefit from a fountain pen, but I do not for one second think that everyone will get excited about them. So let's start there. Let's gauge interest and establish who we're dealing with. If you've talked with someone about fountain pens, what did their interest look like? Did they appear genuinely interested or were they just being polite while you kept on going on and on? If they were asking questions, keeping eye contact and seeming legitimately interested, great! Maybe they were aware that fountain pens were still a thing. That opens up a ton of options for our penabling attempt. We can now shop for something that's going to give them the excitement that they saw while you were explaining your love for the hobby. Heck, maybe they even said, I'd like to try one of those. We'll segment and call this group interested. If you're looking to penable someone who looked confused but not necessarily disinterested, that's a bit different. This person didn't know that fountain pens were still being made, but they're still somewhat intrigued and seem like they want to know more. However, they're not exactly sure if it would be something they would enjoy. So we're going to call these folks curious. Finally, we've got the person who scoffs in disbelief when you mention that fountain pens are still a thriving industry with a very active and passionate community. <laughs> they immediately think that you're talking about a, a quill and keep an eyebrow up during the short, possibly uncomfortable exchange you had with them. Still, you're not one to give up. In the face of certain defeat, you still want to prove to this person that fountain pens deserve respect. We're gonna solve for this and these group of naysayers. And we'll refer to this group as skeptical. Now that we know who we're considering, we've got those three groups, the next step in the process is to do a little reflection on what you know about your target uh, re recipient. Uh, if you feel like you're working with a genuinely interested person, that first group, it's likely that they have some hobbies or interests that might be a part of that fountain pen nerd Venn diagram. Most of us have several strong interests that fight for our attention and our money with fountain pens. Obvious ones would be journaling or writing, but uh, also sewing, knitting, crafting, painting, all of those are green lights as well. Uh, additionally, keep your eye out for collections, watches, folding knives, shoes, handbags, antiques. Uh, collections are another green flag for someone with a higher likelihood of enjoying a fun fountain pen, or at least seeing the value in it. Those green flags could apply to someone in the curious category as well, that second category. Me, for example, I'm generally here. I had a friend tell me about the practical use of replacing my disposable razor with a safety razor, and I got hooked on the practical appeal of it. And now I've been using it for a year. I'm perfectly happy, but I have no interest in more than one type of handle or more than one type of soap or brush. So if you can identify some analog interest or another hobby, it's still very much a good thing. We just might think of something a little bit more utilitarian for the curious folks. Now for the skeptics, that third group. Evaluating them in this way could vary wildly. Think of yourself, for example. Even though you're probably a fountain pen fan, Many of you would scoff at the amount of money some people pay for wristwatches or jeans. But if you take the time and actually listen to someone who's really passionate about them, I'll bet you that you can at least, at the very least, understand why they love them and comprehend its value if that person were to gift one to you, right? 
And that's what you want to do here. Is your skeptic someone who just doesn't understand or someone that actively thinks that it's kind of dumb? And now it's time to take what we learned and apply it to our pen selection efforts. For those that we decided are interested, we obviously have the most freedom here. Speaking of freedom, the more hobbies you have identified for your recipient, the more you can feel free to make them work a bit, for lack of a better term. They might actually like the extra effort, or at least they might be used to it. These folks probably already know how to navigate rabbit holes of fascinating niche interests, and they might be eager to jump in and start playing around with one. With that in mind, go with Twisby. It can be the Eco, the 580, the VAC, doesn't matter because each of these models provide a fun experience. When you get your pen, you're immediately treated to a fun unboxing experience with bonus accessories to fiddle around with. And keep in mind though, tinkering is optional, so don't feel like you're gifting something that is going to require a lot of effort. The disassembly is just there if they want it. If you're gifting these to a collector, consider the Eco or the 580 though, because there are a ton of great colors to pick up. These folks might also appreciate the versatility of spare nibs being available. And finally, these pens are transparent, so it's a great choice to show off its, you know, sloshiness, all the ink, and uh, illustrate exactly what's going on inside of a fountain pen. And as far as ink goes, I'd recommend pairing these with a 70 mil bottle of Twisby ink. You're going to get great presentation that's very gifty and coordinates well with the pen that you're giving them. But also, these bottles come with an internal cup that rests in the mouth of the bottle that allows for easy filling. For the curious bunch, our priority is to make sure that they have a great experience out of the box and don't get scared off by the filling or cleaning. We want them to have fun, but not at the expense of potentially scaring them off. So it's important to stoke the embers of their curiosity, but not douse them. And for that reason, I recommend choosing one of, or if not perhaps the most popular first time fountain pen in the world, the Lamy Safari. Visually, the Safari isn't everyone's cup of tea, but we all know it when we see one. What the Safari does right is making things easy. These pens are affordable, they're durable, and they are versatile. Meaning you can get one for less than $30, they don't crack, and you can easily and affordably change the nib to a different size. If you want to keep things as simple as possible for these curious folks, just stick with the blue cartridge that will be included with the Safari. However, if you feel like your recipient would be up for a bit of fun, consider adding a cartridge converter. Lamy's Z28 converter is solid, and you can easily get a full fill out of it. Couple the converter with Lamy's small nib, and it's a great candidate for ink samples as well. That little nib is marvelous at filling from ink samples, and packaging ink samples with your gift allows your recipient some extra options if they want it. I'll also say that the Pilot Metropolitan is a solid choice if you feel your recipient would respond better to a more conventional pen profile. Now it's time for the skeptics. I'm going to do something a little bizarre here and a little risky. Not so sure of myself, we'll see. Remember how I said that this group can vary wildly? Well, we're going to take two very different paths. Two very different paths. Okay, path one. If you get the impression that this person simply does not understand why anyone would waste their time with a fountain pen and seems to think that it's straight up silly, get them a Pilot Varsity. Nothing else. A Varsity or V-Pen as they're called in other countries. It never dries out. It writes on a wide variety of paper and will only set you back a few dollars if you simply must get this person a fountain pen. The Varsity is the perfect envoy. Okay, path two. There are skeptics who are also hobbyists. Now this type of person might not see the appeal, but you have identified other equally complex hobbies and interests. It's a gamble, but if you're confident and have the money, shoot straight for a Pilot Custom 743. Yes, it is expensive for a gift, but I feel that this pen fits the bill to be considered the choice if you were to only have one pen. It's going to work and it's going to last. Even for someone who is skeptical, if they recognize quality, if they appreciate legacy, and if they do enjoy writing, I can't imagine why they wouldn't connect with this one. The 743 and the Varsity are both just about as sure of a thing as you can get in the modern fountain pen world at vastly different price points. Also, every time we ship an order, 
we throw in one of these brochures that provide instructions on how to fill different types of pens, as well as a QR code that'll take you to a curated series of helpful videos. Definitely not a bad idea when gifting a pen. Another not so bad idea when gifting a pen is to consider gifting a bulb syringe. Flushing out a grip section with one of these instead of using a converter over and over and over again will help decrease the likelihood of your recipient getting frustrated by the cleaning process. Finally, I'm gonna say this. You don't need to penable anyone. Yes, it's wonderful when we can connect with someone that understands and even shares our passion, but most people just don't care. And that's okay. Fountain pens provide an intimate and personal experience so you can be happy on your own and with the online community. Plus, we'll always be here for you. Thank you so much for joining me. Have fun, right on.